we'll find out what it happens mode <laughs> hi everybody welcome welcome we are streaming live now it's this like Friday night with louise and jocelyn the ear is doing better it's not healing as fast as the surgeon would like it? But I can oh, put yeah. earphones over top of my ear now, and yeah, my yeah, ear yeah. doesn't go F you and the horse you rode in on. So I'm stuck in healing weight I mode, but I'm at the point where those interior internal stitches should start popping. So at some point, I'm going to start looking around because it'll have been a twang in oh. my ear, and I won't know why. Because there'll be that moment of, oh, yeah, stitch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Healing is such a slow process. It's such a bloody pain in the butt. Uh, I was excited. I was going to go to D and D tomorrow. Nope. Yeah. Nope. <sighs> Our DM is got a small kid, and him and his his wife. So we we go to their house, right? Poor Mister Little R has been homesick for the last couple of days. Oh no! The so mom mom messaged me today and said. You should call in tomorrow because we've done really good at not making you sick. I'm like, we've, we've been pretty restrictive on making sure I'm not exposed, which is fair. I love a cold and a chest infection like nobody's business. We are buddies for months. It's just not good. Just, <laughs> I didn't know what healthy was till everybody had to go into lockdown and I finally got a break. <laughs> I'm, I am loath to give up not chaining cold to cold to cold to chest infection to cold to chest like i'm i'm not willing to go back to that so i like blame you i'm not doing it i'm not we are now more socially aware of what people with compromised immune systems are i am now putting my foot down isn't we've now reached a public level of awareness where i can go well no <laughs> you know what it is right and now it's a, it's people have that choice of what works for them and what's and we're not today. we're not okay we're still bullied we're still birth to people still go hey you worry too much okay well you're not the one who has to go to the hospital and get oxygen we have a chest cold so yes i'm gonna worry everybody like, needs to mind their own business <laughs> my health thank you very much you have no right to make me sick you just you just don't no so I'm like, ah, but thankfully this group is is fine. And one of our players calls him from Thailand because that's where he's teaching right now. Oh. So it's so not like I won't I'll be the only person on the phone call tonight tomorrow night. I was looking forward to going in person though, because everybody was healthy. At least I thought everyone was healthy. <laughs> I don't know. There's always all humans. It's a stage. He's he started going to daycare post pandemic. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, no, we just got to get through the first few years. You're always the roughest. So, oh, Wendy found us. Yay. Hello, we, were, hello. Yes, we, were, we were We were a little bit late because Jocelyn and I were chatting. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh. Louise crap. is being kind, guys. I was eating a peanut butter and honey sandwich. And Louise let me finish my supper. <laughs> it was very kind of her. Us hungry. So, I've but, had some crappy focus days, so food has been fun. Listen to this, Jocelyn. I'm with you. Wendy sent me a message a couple of nights ago. Okay. Me the most exciting news that I think a knitter can have. Can hear. I'm with you. I'm sitting. I couldn't she, get more prepared. She told me about another yarn shop that I did not know about. What? I that was literally what i'm moving reaction. to ontario I'm, mo I'm moving in with you i hope you've got a spare bedroom i'm done with this <laughs> local yarn store drought i live in that's it i'm moving closer to diana and louise enough of this nonsense well come on over um yeah not and that i'm hurting guys erin literally dropped off a whole sweater quantity of yarn last week in her one of her new non-super wash bases <laughs> I was, it's, it's not like I'm hurting for a wonderful option that Good I don't job. have to pay shipping for. <laughs> Good job. You've got an in with a fantastic <laughs> diary. <laughs> so it's fine. It's the same when I would order from Daria. And when I order from Daria, which is Cloud9 Fireworks, she's always like, let's go for coffee. And I don't pay shipping. I go for coffee and I get yarn. So it's just, I don't have a bad system. I just don't have as many local yarn stores as yeah. you guys have. I know we've got lots and and the crazy thing is is yeah I didn't even know this one existed. Oh, so it's like new to you. Oh, it'd be so good. I know, and I and I drove through that town 
last Friday. Mm -hmm. But the exciting thing is, is I'm going to be going up there again on Thursday. <gasps> Ooh, so, might be some yarn shopping. I know. And I was, ha and I was halfway there today and I was so tempted. I'm like, Ooh, do I continue on? And then no, I mean, <laughs> be careful. Cause you've got knit city, Toronto, like early May. I know it's coming up. It's coming up. It is yeah about a month about a month away about a month away so like oh. you, you guys out there have got some uh, a lovely weekend coming up for you we have got i know it's may is going to be such a fun month yeah. for me i should be knitting <laughs> yes i pulled up my my sock hey everybody that's in the chat okay i'm gonna work on my purple sweater baby kitten i am so sorry i need to write this down you're gonna have to tell me your name again and I, know I love your handle name of baby kitten. I know. As soon as you tell me, I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, that's right. I I do not know why I cannot. That cannot stick in my head. Um, But Cindy is here and Joe and Wendy. Ooh, hello, 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 hello. hello. And we've got a bunch of people watching that are just sitting back knitting. Good. Joe says, oh, Joe says, I'm going to a yarn and wool festival in two weeks in Maryland. Oh my <gasps> Joe, that's that Maryland me. sheep and wool. Yes, and it is always the weekend of my birthday and some year I You're gonna am, get there? I'm going to go for my birthday. Absolutely. So, but I guess it's not gonna be this week or this year <laughs> because I didn't plan it. But um maybe next year. Oh my gosh. Okay, Joe, you were gonna have to give me the whole lowdown. Oh yeah, it's um, supposed to be an amazing festival, Maryland sheep and wool. Yeah. I, I want yes. Oh, Kristen. Kristen's hey, little kitty. Kristen. Yeah, little kitten. Little, yeah. Guys, I don't even call my cat the name I gave her when she came home, which is not the name she had when I bought her. <laughs> she had some sort of geode name. I was just like, no, no. Came okay. home, and everyone's like, just transition slowly. I just started calling her Phaedra the day she came home. They get used to it, right? Yeah. Well, now she answers to Phaedra, Tiny Dictator, Monster, Quadruped, <laughs> Drama Queen. She just knows. You don't, there's nobody else in your apartment. So if you're talking, it's got to be to her, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hello, Tammy. Oh, oh, oh my God. Tammy. Tammy says she lives less than 10 miles. Okay. From the sheep, from the Maryland Sheep and Wolf Festival. See, just, oh, I wish. Okay. I wish. So, does anybody <laughs> know, like, I, I, I was at Rhinebeck uh, quite a few years ago. And I loved it because, well, A, it was such a huge show. Mm -hmm. But there was so many, like, the, the focus on all the animals. The alpaca and the sheep and, like, um... There was like early like herding, sheep herding, and all kinds of things, which was really, really fun. So does Maryland sheep and well, I'm guessing because of the name. It obviously, I'm assuming, has, has both. Well. Yeah. Does does both aspects to it. Yeah. That'd be really it doesn't occur to me that a lot of places don't do that because the Manitoba Fiber Festival does that. We showcase the animals as well as as the yard and, and handmade objects and stuff. So yeah, see, in our yeah. shows here, like Woolstock is not; it's just purely vendors. Kitchener's Knitter Fair is just vendors. Um. Oh wait, hold on. I said Woolstock. Okay, so Kitchener. Yeah, I said Woolstock. Yes. Yeah, so Woolstock. Okay, I'm gonna take that back. Um. They do have they do they do have some animals. Not a lot, but they do have some on display. Like they'll have a couple of alpaca. And they usually have some angora bunnies. Okay. Um, there's a lady that will have a maybe a, um, a llama. She has a, a llama farm. Lots of times she does demonstrations around at local fairs and things. So there's no showing of them, but they do do usually like the, with the angora rabbits. They'll do a little demonstration of how they brush them and um, care for the rabbit and that kind of thing. But it's not <laughs> like there's a lot but there is but there is animals at that one but um yeah i know and i like that i wish there was more of that i like that part of it seeing all the animals 
it's nice this year this past year they had to actually get a second space because we usually had the anim animals in with us in the main building room but it the fiber festival is finally grown big enough that they needed the space so they moved the animals to their own location and space so <laughs> you could go uh look at and learn about sheep breeds and alpacas which are big out here uh, yeah. that sort of idea so that, that was always good. I know Enchanted Grove, she always brings a couple of her alpacas in. They're gorgeous creatures. Yes. Gorgeous creatures. I love them. My nose, not so much. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. For some people, it might be a little, I guess, I guess there's advantages, you know, if you have allergies, you might want to stick to the shows that don't have the that, animals yeah that are animal free yeah. but... or at least have them in a space where it's not quite so in your face depending on on what your requirements are right like i wouldn't take my mom to a wool show that had animals she already has enough trouble with like the wool and finding uh indie dyers who do cotton or linen it's yeah. very very hard it is it yeah. is yeah there's not a lot or bamboo silks that sort of idea which my mom has to use so Okay. Oh, so Joe said, I saw a comment here that her daughter, so your, Joe, your daughter lives in the area. Um, let me go back. Did I miss a comment here? Hold on. Yes. My daughter lives in the area and she's going to go with her. Um, That'll be a good weekend. Tammy says you'll have lots of fun. Yeah. And Tammy says, yes, they have critters there. <laughs> um, have some kits. Okay. Not many. Joe's daughter and I are trying to plan what we want to look for. Her daughter's got two patterns picked out. So that's good. It's kind of good to go with a little bit of a plan in mind. So you don't come home with all of the things. <laughs> um, okay. So Tammy says it's not adjacent to a town or village put in the fields by itself. No walking over a bridge to get to town and food. Okay, yes. Yeah. So you, I like that, that it's totally on its own. They have a good number of food vendors on site. So you're there just for the show. Okay. That would be good. Oh, well. All right. So I love this. So Cheryl's away this weekend at Caroline's mm -hmm. Stitch North cross stitching retreat. So yeah, and next weekend, so the Fiber Friends don't have a podcast tomorrow. We didn't have a chance to record because Cheryl was busy getting ready to go away for the weekend, so there just won't be anything tomorrow. That's fair. But so next Saturday when we're together, we'll have to have Cheryl give us the whole lowdown on how her weekend was because I know she's with Dawn from Codependent Knitters. Mm -hmm. Heather, the dyer from Timber Yarns, did not go away with them this weekend. So, um, but there is um, Diane who owned a yarn shop up in Shelburne. She's going to be there. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of, Cheryl, I'm sure, is going to have a lot of fun stories and have a really, really good weekend. And then yeah. Joe will have to give us the whole lowdown in a couple of weeks on what she and her daughter find and what you come back with and what goodies and let us know what animals you see joe are you going to go check out the animals when you're there is that kind of a focus like like is does that something that excites you or are you just like mainly going to focus your time just on looking for the yarn or kind of split it up enchanted grove likes to bring me very very soft alpaca fleeces to feel knowing that i won't buy one because if I dressed myself in an alpaca sweater, I would melt to death. But she just she just loves doing it anyway because she knows I appreciate the softness level. But it's so like, soft. You gonna I mean, are you gonna fall down that rabbit hole? I mean, I highly endorse it. I highly yeah. endorse it. Oh, it's always good. It's always good fun. Just go and enjoy. Do yeah. things. Oh. I like the idea of having like a couple of you know what top two or three patterns that yes, you're you're kind of on the hunt. Yeah. Now, I mean, what, it never what? stops me from buying pretty things, but I like knowing that in my back pocket, I've got a, some sort of a, at least a focus on what I'm looking for. Like, I've moved away from a lot of, I have a lot of accessories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've moved more towards garment making because that's the hole I need to fill. Right. Right now. So my brain's kind of like, huh. 
So when I go, I I look for things like cardigan quantities, sweater quantities. Yes. I rediscovered the joy of leggings this past winter. Oh man, leggings. And leg warmers is so good. I wear skirts all year, guys. <laughs> I don't I don't really do pants. So what? some leg warmers under my skirts. Oh yeah, super cozy. That's awesome. I love that. Just another way to wear your wear your knitwear. Keep warm at the same time. Well, by the time I put leggings on, skirt on, leg warmers on, I have more fabric around my legs than everybody else does. So I'm generally not cold. That's good. Yeah. Well, that's the main. Boots Both. high enough to survive stepping in a snowbank because I'm so doing that. <laughs> oh, Mary's here. Oh, Tammy says fleeces will occupy a barn by themselves. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's, if it's you just, are oh. a thinner, that sounds like heaven. <gasps> Joe says we hope to see the animals, too. Oh, a scarf pin. Joe's on the lookout for a scarf pin. Nice. Uh, I bet That's... you will find a lot to choose from there. Yeah. Oh, I know. Isn't that just so exciting? I don't even know when we go to um, Knit City. I um, I haven't really planned out anything that I'm looking for. Um, yeah, not really. So I yeah, it's still a little ways away yet. And I've got one shopping. No, I've got Knit City comes first, and then our retreat weekend is the weekend after and that's another yarn shopping weekend that i'm really really looking forward to you'll have to keep an eye out for diana if she's going to be there okay you should run up and say hi because she won't yeah. she will not i'm telling you right now she will not do it she will not do it she will get so weirded out about going up to say hi to somebody she's only met on the internet she won't do it she relies on me to do these things and i'm happy to do them like oh it's my not a thing that we're, yeah a lot oh, of people right. will do that because we'll, we'll be places and Diana will be like, yeah, no, no, if you see Jocelyn, run up and say hi to her. She's happy to meet you. But I, I won't do it. I'm, I'm like, I don't see people. I hear them. <laughs> I usually stop and go, hey, I hear this person. <laughs> Point them out. Because <laughs> I can't see there's too many people around. <laughs> but I just, oh, I love sending people to find Diana in real life. You see her, you just, just stop her in real life and go, oh my God, Diane, it's so nice to meet you and talk to her. She'll just, I mean, she's so flabbergasted that people watch the podcast. I know. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Well, she better, if she sees me, she had better come over and say hello. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I hope so. Oh, I hope she has fun. Tammy's got some more info here. She said they have big tents on each end of the fairgrounds. <laughs> Say 20 vendors in each tent. If vendors um, position like last year, the tent on the high ground should have a vendor with pins and stitch markers. There you go, Joe. Here's hoping. <gasps> oh, Wendy, you're going to you're going to Knit City Toronto too. She's taking yes. a drop spindle class. Oh. oh good. Drop spinning's fun. I enjoy it, it a lot. So fun. I oh my gosh. Yeah. That is the one thing. If I was to do more of something else, it would be it, drop spinning. It would be it would be spinning. It would yeah. be, yeah, and probably 50-50 between I would really like to get better using the wheel. Mm -hmm. I'd like, I mean, I need to get better using the drop spindle as well. But I can do it. I'm just not very fast. That's um, fine. I, to be honest, even when you get to the point where you, you do it all the time, you're still not fast. It's still it's still a bit of a it's slower than a wheel. Oh, well, for sure. But, you know, you see some people that they can just spin, you know, they, they, they spin and that they're, they're, they're drafting and they're just like doing it all yep. like a nice, even flow. I have to do it very step by step. And so it doesn't flow, but I can do it. I just need to just get everything to move together a little bit better. But then that's just practice. Yeah. And. And that's my own fault because I don't, I go in, in spells, right? I'm like, oh, I want to spin everything. So I do it for like a weekend, right? And then I don't do it again for a year. And then I'm like, oh, I think I want to spin again. So it's really hard to 
I have been uh, wrapping the visual limitations around learning to spin on a spinning wheel. It has been a very steep <laughs> learning curve that I am not doing well with right now. Well, but I have to I have to figure out how to remove as much of the visual component as possible. So yeah, no, we're fiddling with things and puzzling should, it out. That should be doable, right? It is. I just, it is for the drop right? spinning. I, I don't really look at my drop spinning. I just do it. <clears throat> I just have to learn how to have the same process at a faster pace for the spinning wheel. So Okay. Well, Mary says she likes the supported spindle. Yeah. So Mary, so is that one that like just sits on the table or is it a, lar a larger one that sits on the floor? Because <sighs> I've got a large one that sits on the floor and I really want to use it. Oh my goodness, you guys, everybody, Wendy. Everybody is going to be so excited to hear all about your adventures. Wendy says she is also going to the PEI Fiber Festival in October Ooh. and taking, that must be a, a spinning class. Is that a spinning class? Or a steaking? <laughs> Maybe a steaking class. I'm guessing, I think autocorrect auto fixed, fixed her comment. I'm guessing it says steaking. Wendy, oh my gosh, to go out to PI, that would be amazing. It's such a beautiful green out that way. Oh, that such is such a beautiful fun. green. Okay, well then everybody, as the fiber shows come in your area, you're going to have to give us all the details about, you know, the new vendors you saw, which ones were your favorite, where you bought from, what did you get? Yes, steaking, she says. I am uh be experiencing whatever Fibel festivals Aaron takes me to. Well <laughs> to be it. to be a helper at her booth. <laughs> but you you guys go to a handful of shows, which is always yeah. fun. I tend to do the smaller ones because it's then then Tristan can have a weekend off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when Aaron gets home. Aaron takes a day or two off and he unloads the car and he does the other things for her so she doesn't have to. So it's a good way for them to stagger breaks and stuff. Yep. Which is so important when you work yep. for yourself. So important. Oh yeah. You gotta you gotta set those boundaries for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. But and it's also kind of nice for you two to have a girls' weekend away too. We do. We visit mom. Uh yeah. we're currently because we're gonna be out in bigger Saskatchewan in June, which is like June the eighth. I think, yeah, the weekend of June the eighth. Uh, we're trying to figure out uh, when to uh, get there so we can help mom do some stuff around the trailer. Mom's already making a to-do list. I think her and Aaron are painting little gnomes to go because mom wants to make a great hall for her gnome village she's building outside. That sounds so fun. These are things we enjoy doing, so we're very excited to help and do things. Oh, but we do we do like great. causing my dad some consternation when all three of us are sitting on the couches all day long. <laughs> Mom's reading and we're knitting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, I just gotta check. I don't know what I did here. Yeah. I almost look like I don't know. I'm just gonna go with it's dark colored yarn and nobody is going to see it. I if somebody is close enough to your knitting to notice okay. something like a split stitch or a, a, a twisted yeah. one off twisted leg in a stockinette garment, they better be related to you or in a serious relationship to you. Exactly. Otherwise it just, just back up. I know. Back, back up. I know. I'm just looking and like, why is that one a little loose? But I don't know. I'm just gonna carry on. Yeah. Um. Oh, Mary. Hi, Mary. Oh. Oh. Wait. Tammy says two vendors. I will stop at is Miss Babs and One Hundred Ravens. Okay, Miss Babs. I heard of, and I was in there. Her booth. Her. I'm assuming it's a woman. Um. At Rhinebeck, and it was probably the busiest booth as soon as the gates opened everybody kind of just immediately went to their you know the one they wanted to get something from 
And I remember Miss Babs was, it was like so crowded you couldn't even get in. So I don't even know if we actually did go in. But yeah, it was definitely a big draw. And 100 Ravens, I have not even heard of. So that's exciting. So Tammy, what are you, are you going to be looking for? Are you looking for sweater quantities or socks or color work projects? Always good to have that vendor you know you want to go hit up. Yes. Okay, Mary Mary says either. Oh, loves. Okay, so oh, so Mary say either. So on where to spend it on the table or on the floor. I took a class last summer where they use a large spoon to support the spindle. The oh. handle of the spoon hooked into your waistband or your pocket, and you put the tip of the spindle on it in the bowl of the spoon. Oh, that'd be an interesting way of doing it. I have never even heard of that. Now I need to like look this up on YouTube. She's off to the Googles. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So Mary, have you done this? Do you have a spoon? Is like, is it a, a spinning spoon? Is it a specific spoon? Can you just grab one out of your kitchen drawer? Do you use like a big, like serving spoon, like mashed potatoes serving spoon? Or is it just a small regular teaspoon? I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be big, right? It just... That is so interesting. Um, okay, Tammy says, yes, Miss Babs is, oh, is a very nice lady. They usually bring a show color too. Well, you know what? That's what I was just thinking. When I was thinking about that back at Rhinebeck, I think that was the draw was that they had a show color and everybody was going there immediately before it sold out. So very fun. So t will you, will you try and get the show color? Oh, jo and Joe's been to a Miss Babs pop-up shop. Fun. 100 Ravens is local to Baltimore. Edgar Allan Poe connection. Oh, okay. Okay. See, for me, it'd be like if Dragon Horde Yards is there, that'd be the first place I'd go. Would it? I love, I love her moody, variegated colorways. I, lo I love them. I love them so much. So much. I love the namings that she does. I just, yeah, I love the whole vibe it's, of her. her oh, stuff. That's, and that's, that's super that's what, good. That's what you find, right? You yeah. find those. You find your peeps, like Area you 51 do. fibers. Oh, I'd love to try their yarn one day because I just love their colors so yeah. much. Yeah. So good. There's one gentleman, I think he's dying out in Alberta. Oh, heavens, what's his name? Anyway, he does amazing deep again super saturated rich colors so they show up for me <laughs> oh well then that's exactly what you need yeah yeah the there i love looking and admiring the softer colored yarns but i don't i don't i don't see them <laughs> if there isn't a yes. very strong saturated that color i'm not i'm not registering it well, see, and you know, and I always find that I'm in the m minority because while everybody is going to find pretty sock yarn, yeah. I find myself going to the farm booths. Yes. The people that come there with the natural, like not hand dyed, like it's just, it's white, it's yeah. black, right? Yeah. And it's good to have. That's yeah. a good staple yarn. It's I. To yep, be honest, in with all my colored garments, I wear gray, I wear white, I wear black, I wear navy blue. Uh, yep, and there's one here local to us. And actually, I could go right to the farm. It It is Ooh. probably a 20-minute drive and uh, Gainer Homestead. And they have beautiful yarn, and they have started dyeing some with um, natural dyes as well. So you can yeah. get some blues and a pink and... Um, I yeah, long okay. here. We, one of the ones here is Long Way Homestead. She does natural dyes. They're okay. really pretty. I cannot tell the difference well, between the pink and the green because it's too soft of a, a shade is, differential for me. Exactly. And, and it doesn't mean there's anything worth beautiful yarn. For me, it's a problem. Guys, I can't tell the difference between this purple and the gray in the DK vintage. Aaron has sorted these things and elastic to them together and put them in different bags so that I don't confuse the two. 
because the dark purple to charcoal gray, which I have, I cannot tell the difference between when they're beside each other. They look yeah. the same to me. <laughs> it's it's not the dire, it's the faulty eyeballs. <laughs> Well, then that's nothing wrong with the bright colors, something that's got lots of good contrast for you. Okay. Oh, man. My mom's mom would be so proud of me as a grandchild. I eat vegetables. I believe in being one of those violently colored creatures in nature that warns people I'm poisonous. I, <laughs> <laughs> I do not give a flying fart if people don't like me. I'm fine with it. It's not a problem. I don't consider it an issue because I'm not for everyone and everyone's not for me there's people out there that i don't enjoy and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that yeah my my grandma Catherine, if she was still around would be so proud of me i admit she tried to teach me when i was younger to not go well oh <laughs> she'd be stoked um mary okay oh my gosh mary i'm like having this i'm like putting oh. these memory fragments are coming to, into my head here okay so mary you got okay 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 so those ones are gonna go wait 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 <laughs> you guys can now blame mary for this because uh -oh. i feel that i am going to go down a rabbit hole here okay so mary was talking about the spoons that hooked onto your belt right yes. and i'm immediately thinking i think i need this and mary says etsy dancing goats sells the spindle and the kit it's a larger spoon he sells antique silver spoons quite interesting that'd be fun it wow did right? you have to jump over and... the top of your perch buddy that was loud so mary I... when you said dancing dancing goats i'm like okay that sounds so familiar and i'm like okay i'm like i saw him somewhere and he had the big tall spindle and i'm like it was at the michigan fiber festival that we were all at together did you see him? I mean, this was, it, you must have seen him there. I mean, that's where I saw him. And I, I chatted with him because he had this, this big spindle that was on the floor. And I know I was amazed, but there's a girl here, local to us, who makes spindles. So she makes like regular drop spindles and then she makes the, the, the big floor ones and mm -hmm. they're all out of recycled wood from their bush oh good yes so see guys like i have a wheel i have several drop spindles i have a uh turkish drop spindle um one of the patron members sherry the google food master herself uh if i'm struggling to find something sherry i just i literally go at sherry in the discord chat and i go oh my god i need help i'm trying to find a thing and it's like five <laughs> minutes later she's like here you go with a link i don't even know how she does it it's crazy so she's she's my google food master when i get she, trapped I in a corner that. she usually rescues me so she gave me a turkish drop spindle let's be honest i don't i don't need any more i might get an electric spinning wheel yeah um, yeah yeah i want to try some more with one of diana has uh, the original like electric eel wheel i don't want the nano i don't want the little one don't even suggest it i don't want it yeah not that <laughs> no Oops. i don't want something that looks like i'm gonna break it with my giant man hands no thank you i want like an appropriate adult sized piece of equipment uh, well, but i i'm trying to i can't i can't remember if her eel wheel was quiet enough to not bother my ears because oh. I, I am sound sensitive right so I'm like, mm. so I wanted to try it. So she's like, yes, I'll just spin the stuff that's on it off. I'm Six months later, I'm still waiting. It's fine. It makes me laugh. I poke at her every once in a while. I'm like, how's that thing you're going to load me? She's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I might get one of those, but I probably wouldn't do a supported drop spindle. I like the idea of them, but my brain doesn't go, I want to try that. See, in my head. My brain wants to try a walking spinning wheel. That's like Ooh. the diameter of the wheel is like six feet or more. Well, yeah. Do we even have room for that in your apartment? I do not. <laughs> I do, <laughs> do not have space for it. Because you need a large, a large amount of space because you're walking is how the <laughs> and you're spinning <laughs> while you're pacing back and forth. I, I want that so like if there was an opportunity to have one of those yes 
All right. See, yes. I love how everybody has it's something that immediately sparks that, like that feeling of that. like, I need to do that. Okay. So in the chat, you guys, are you guys, has anybody else thinking about spinning? Like drop spindles, wheels, electric spinners. Does anything like the big floor one, you guys know what I mean by the big floor one? Like it's like, yeah, I have an Ashford traditional. She lives in my living room. That's what mm -hmm. I'm living on. Yeah. Yeah. I've got an Ashford. I've got an Ashford. And then she's I have a, a she's a refurbished. I'm her second yeah. home. Yeah. I've she prefers DK and worsted weight yarns. She's not a fan of fingering. No. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> no, we are not. <laughs> okay. Oh, Tammy says she's she wants sweater accent colors to make full sweater quantities out of yarns in her stash. Oh, that's a good way of doing it, especially if you like color work. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, that's a good way. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. And oh yeah, Tammy. Oh, Tammy's gotten the show colors for the past two years for Miss Babs. See? That's fun. I'm always like, it depends on what the show color is. I'm such I'm such a color person. Like if it's not a show color that would look good on me, I don't do it. But you wouldn't I get I appreciate it. the color, but I don't do it. But you wouldn't get it just so you could say you had it every year and then make something and gift it to somebody who does like that color? No. My stash is for me. It's not for other people. Like if I make something <laughs> and I give it away, it's because I've made it. And I've been like, I enjoyed making it, but I'm not going to use it. Yeah. And away it goes. But I buy for my joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, you, so I'm going to know. If you know want it. something for me... It either has to be something I just have hanging around because I liked the color or you have to be bringing it into my life because I'm giving you the labor as the gift. So true, true. So what do you guys all think? Would you buy Would you buy the color just so you could say you had it as a souvenir from the show? Or if it was a color you didn't like, would you pass on it? I'm curious to see. It's a bit of a personal decision. Yeah. I mean. I hear uh, her. What, what, no, I don't want you. Oh, you have <laughs> I had a cat come and join a little while ago, too. Oh, and my, Mary says I might be able to use one of my drop spindles as a support spindle. Maybe. I know. I'll have to do a little research on that. Oh, Susanna wants to know, Jocelyn, did you get the box? I did look at my mailbox today, Susanna. My vision isn't good enough for me to do stairs. So I've been stuck in the apartment all day. Okay. Yes. Well, don't. Yeah, yeah I'm staring you down because I don't want you to climb on top of my chest. So does anybody else have any fiber festivals near them? What is what is the closest fiber festival to you? Does anybody have any plans to go to any? I mean, I'm super excited about Knit, Knit City Toronto because I've never been there. I mean, to this show. Been it's to the first year, isn't it? Because Montreal was last yeah. year, this year it's Toronto. And I was all set. I was going to go to Montreal because the last couple of years I've wanted to go to Montreal and haven't. And I was like, that's it. This is the year I'm going to go. And then they announced they were coming oh. to Toronto, which I was I had mixed feelings about because on one hand I was like, oh, darn, it's not in Montreal because I actually wanted to go to Montreal and I was going to spend an extra couple of days and just do, you know, tour around the city a little bit. And, uh, but then I like, I've okay. been your caretaker for almost your entirety of your life you think i don't know how your brain works no i'm you can, listening you know exactly what she's wanting but mm -hmm. but then having toronto is a whole lot closer which means it is a day trip which means the expense really? of going is a lot less because i can just drive and park and drive home all in one day and potentially make more yarn purchases since if i disappear i'll be right back okay could you not could you not get you hello stop 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 do you want me to clean your eyeballs oh that's not what you wanted oh well too bad it happened okay so tammy says about the show color she's like no only if she likes it will she buy it yeah there's oh these were a light blue with specks and the other was a dark blue tonalish other one was pink and gold, not my preference, so passed. This year might be green. Okay. So yeah, it just comes down to the color. Like last year, the fiber Manitoba Fiber Festival one was this beautiful sunflower yellow. Yeah. <laughs> not for my skin tone, it won't nah. be. So I didn't do it right. Just it just depends. Oh, will the camera shake? Here she goes. 
pull through space <laughs> two percent oh, yeah. oh mary's got their retreat in two weeks yes mary organizes some different retreats for some some knitters in her area mary that'll be so fun i always wanted to try doing that setting up a retreat for around here for people around here oh it's fun it's gonna be fun that is pretty much what's been holding me back is i go whoa the work volume yeah it's a lot of work but the weekend itself you know would be great oh susanna yeah. says what about calgary's knit city that's right when is that one susanna is that's in the summer right isn't it is anybody close enough to go to that or is anybody doing a little weekend trip for that show hi kim she said there's a fiber festival in central Ohio in the fall and she hopes mm -hmm. to go this year. That'd be lovely. That's fun. And it's always, I don't know, there's something about fiber festivals in the fall that I don't know if it's just because the weather's turning, the leaves are so pretty, and then you can wear your sweaters, right? Like how everybody knits a sweater to wear to Rhinebeck. Sometimes it's too warm to wear them, but lots of times mid-October it's perfect sweater weather my favorite my favorite knitting trunk show sale convention weekend fiber festival take take your pick yeah. favorite used to be run by I don't even know if it's still running because again everything stopped with lockdown right yeah they ran the Norwood Naughty Knitters <laughs> it's just a beautiful alliteration for the group did a one day come knit like maybe 12 vendors tiny tiny in a community club with like a hockey rink attached to yeah, it yeah, yeah. in january oh. and it was just the best thing because you got in and it's community center so there was space to hang up your coats and stuff and you literally went in and you had spinners were there and knitters were there and it was just great and you just sat and it was a sunday and you just chilled for like four or five hours yeah. and you bought some yarn and you worked on a project and you chatted with people and you took a class or two because we had a class or two going so just oh but it was like right in the middle of winter just to kick off the new year you had a fiber thing and i was just I like love yes that. yes i, I would it's travel for that and i love the idea of that yeah. but just the fact that you've got weather complications, you know. Never stopped like, me. Never stopped me. Uh, For one year, it was like it. an extra two feet of snow had fallen the day before. Don't care. We all went. It was still well received. And still a lot of us showed up. Nope. Weren't stopping us for going. There you go. <laughs> um, oh, Mary says, go for it, Jocelyn. It's not that difficult. That must be the walking the walking wheel that or running a retreat <laughs> oh, oh so a couple people are excited so kim had said about the the fiber professor in central ohio um kristen asked kim where is it mary said is that the show in ohio at the dairy farm yes because mary we had talked about going to that show didn't we and that was probably 2020 so that i want to go to some american fiber festivals just imagine the small indie farms and dyers you'd get to meet that just they aren't yeah. big enough scale to go anywhere else and to and to be farther oh you just find such beautiful stuff you wouldn't be able to find anywhere else oh my so I know it's fun just to go yeah. out of your region. local area. Yeah, your region. Yeah. Okay, so Mary also says the Michigan Fiber Festival in, uh, is in August, and it was a big show. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because that's how I when I went the one time I went to Knit City, Vancouver. We found me and Dinah found. Oh, what's the name of the dyer? It's got the black cat yarns. Oh, we just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It was so cool to meet the people that do the dye and just, oh, yeah. It was so, so, so fun. So lovely. Uh, they have great colored yards. They're very highly saturated and like twisted fiber works. So just, we got to see a whole bunch of different dyers that we would normally wouldn't get to see. Yes. Yeah. And that, that is nice because it's like we have our favorites, like right around here, like we're, we're so lucky. We have got a lot of. You local guys do. 
dyers here. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's great because a lot of our local shows. Oh, what am I hearing? It's Daisy. <laughs> um, My mom's just wandered away. It's about time for yours to show so up. When we, we go to like Woolstock and we go to Kitchener and, um, you know, there's one in Fergus, there's one in Hamilton and, and some of those shows, um, not so much the Hamilton one, but the other ones, it's nice because you can go around because you know some of the, the dyers. So you can go and, and just chat with them and, you know, you can pick up yarn, but it's nice when we went to the Hamilton one a couple of years ago, they, their focus was on different dyers because I think a lot of people, it was kind of a, a mix depending on how you looked at it, right? Is that when you did go to all the festivals, you knew it was going to be a lot of the same dyers, which was nice because if you liked their yarn and you wanted a certain colorway, you knew they were going to be there and you could get it. But yeah. it's also nice to mix it up a little bit and see somebody that you've never seen before. So mm -hmm. that's what the Hamilton show was. It was very small in a like a beautiful old factory. Like it was amazing. The like all original wood flooring and the, it, yeah, they restored the building really nicely. And, and it was great because then you got to see some newer dyers who were just starting out and didn't have to compete with some of the, like the Miss Babs, you know, like the ones that, is like a household name for knitters, right? So it was kind of nice to see somebody a little different and mix things up a little bit. Always the goal is to buy something from someone I've never heard from before. Or I've never tried yes. before. Every time I get to go to yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, I know. Oh, and say, um, Jocelyn, I was completely wrong. Mary wasn't saying go for it about the walking wheel. She was saying go for it. It's not hard about organizing a retreat yeah yeah I, I thought that might be what she was referencing and my brain's like yeah. oh man uh -huh. maybe i have to think about that oh kim says okay so the show she's talking about in ohio is october 19th and 20th oh and mary says yarn con was an was either oh last weekend or this coming weekend in chicago you guys you know what when I win the lottery okay, and I can retire from work, mm -hmm. I honestly would like to go someplace like every weekend for a year. Could you do like a, a, I don't know, what, what would I even call it? Like a, a year long yarn crawl every weekend go to a different fiber festival or I mean, if you're okay thing. with a disabled person joining you i'm game let's go big stop thinking small we're gonna start in new zealand and we'll just putter our way home it'll take us a year well i mean we would have i mean it would take us a year <laughs> 52 weekends 52 festivals yarn shops yeah. but we make but there's local cool. yarn stores and there's things to see and there'd be new pattern oh yeah you can easily, easily do a year. What is it they would say when you took a gap between primary and secondary education yeah. in like the 19th yeah. century out of England? Oh, I didn't. The kids are calling it like, did you say it like a They call it a gap year now, gap? but it, it had a fancier name at did one it? time. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, uh, you're, and you went to the, you went to the continent. You did a. Are you saying that we should just take a gap year? From I think we should do a gap year. <laughs> from our adulting lives just be yes. like okay yeah yeah we're we're we're, we're yeah. done we're, we'll be back in a year yeah yeah we a grand tour we need oh. to we need to knit in scenic locations in new zealand and visit local yarn stores in japan and we'd like there's things to do there are things to do would and that be fun Think of the podcasting we can do from all these amazing places. Think of us trying to figure out how time zones work with Diana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bad. my goodness. This would be have some weird so wake up fun. times. <laughs> I think I would just love that. Do you think you would get tired of it? Do you no. think it would become boring? No. 
No, because it's not it's not just what you're doing or where you're going. It's different cultures. So and they and they they are different. They have different like what someone in Australia would consider a local, you know, workhorse yarn isn't what we would yeah. consider a local workhorse yarn. Like I was talking with Asa, it's a mm -hmm. two hour airplane ride for her to go from Norway to England. It takes me two hours to fly to Saskatchewan. Like, <laughs> oh, I know the she can travel of... several countries in the amount of airplane time it takes me to get over a provincial line. I know, I know. I'm just like, we would get to Europe and the, the shrunken scale would boggle my mind. Because you I and know. I would be like, it's an hour one way, let's go. And I would be like, are you out of your mind? That's so long. And we'd be like, nah, we're going to have lunch on the way. Like, <laughs> I know it's all perspective because we're so used to having to travel. North American's concept of scale is so out of proportion with the rest yeah. of the planet. It is absurd. You guys, I am like formulating a plan, a worldwide every weekend yarn shopping trip. Yeah. And I could take, and then, like, my, I could take my and go with me. Yeah, you can do your spendings. Because really, what's the worst thing you got to do? Mail home yarn to yourself? Oh, no. That's a hard ship. I know. Could you imagine? I know. Send it Send it to my daughter. Yeah, because if you're doing a different convention or a different yarn <laughs> store every weekend, during the week, you've got regular touristing to do. There are pyramids. There is Chinese blossom festivals. Let's be honest. If I actually something I would do, I would make Louise go to the festival in Japan with a giant foam male member fingers because I want one. And I would mail it home to my mommy and she'd be fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> they celebrate like fertility it. in a very literal phallic symbol way okay and well i, I think we just should... like, how cool it just an ex oh yeah like Everybody... i know i die of heat i die of heat i have problems with heat i don't care i'd go see the pyramids i'd buy spices in the byzantium empire i i know that's not what it is anymore guys i'm a historian that's what i think i would you know lounge on beaches in thailand and want to keel over and melt into a giant puddle like the wicked witch of the west that's not the point the point is i'd absolutely go do those things i would visit the temples in sri lanka like the uh, things i'd love to be able to go do so fun and if it means every week and I have to go to a different yarn store, a different knitting convention, or a different knitting class, or go a bit of different, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Wouldn't it be fun just to find out where the local yarn shop is, yeah. exactly when their knit night is. I just and show up. Drop in and be like, hey, we're from Canada and hello. We're doing a sabbatical. We're here. What are you knitting on? <laughs> What's working on? Show me something to fall down a rabbit hole with. I'd exactly. love to. Oh my gosh. Be so oh. good. With a grand tour. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Be so, oh, Mary, so Mary says I'd be happy just on this continent. Um, a world tour is a, it's yeah. an aggressive idea. So and don't get me wrong. Be... When I got home at the end of the year, I'd be very happy to meet my bed, meet my cat. <laughs> Not yeah. be living out of a suitcase. I'd be stoked when it was finished. But what, what the heck of an experience that would be. Oh, wouldn't it? Yeah. But I think Mary's right. You know, like even, like I'm sure like just in the U.S. alone. You could easily do a year just going you, through the continental North America. You could do. You could do. I'm sure. One, and I'm not even counting South America. America. You could do a year just in North America. I think so. I'm sure you could. Oh, yeah. Easy um oh kristen said just looked it up kim it's only two hours from you okay so ooh. so kristen <laughs> does that mean only two hours that's like totally doable isn't it he was nope. thinking about going which show was that bernadette says hey i'm thrilled i'm going to <gasps> Oh my gosh, Bernadette is going to Little Red Mitten tomorrow for the very first time. Good. Oh my goodness, Bernadette, you will love it. Like, honestly. Um, is that the one out there that has the holster? They do have some holst there. Yep. And Knit Stitch here in London, she has some holst as well. Um. Oh, Bernadette, you will. Okay. 
so you, you'll love it it's such it's such a beautiful yarn shop and the girls um it's tomorrow saturday i don't know if jillian will be working or angie um jolyn could possibly be there um oh you'll have fun you'll have fun you'll enjoy that shop oh, i've got to make it to ontario to go visit the shops of people one day Oh, Maybe. So Bernadette. Oh, Bernadette. Bernadette, are you in Guelph? Okay, so that's not that far. Guelph's not that far. No. Again, and... my idea of perspective is warped. If it's less than a two-hour drive to me, it's a day trip. Like, that two-hour marker is when I'll stop and go, eh, it's a bit of a long day. But that's one way. <laughs> I would do... <laughs> Like Toronto for us is two wish hours, depending on what side of the city you have to go to. Yeah. And yeah, so to me, that's a day trip. Yeah. Get up early, drive, try to miss the traffic. Hopefully, weekends isn't yes. bad. Um, weekday traffic in Toronto is it's probably a bit of a nightmare. It, it, yes, it <laughs> is. It is. <laughs> Um, oh, Cindy says you'll love Little Red Mitten. Yes, she will. Okay, Bernadette, you're going to have to post pictures of what you come home with tomorrow. I'm so excited for you. Kristen says you have a friend in oh, Perrysburg I could stay the weekend with. Okay, so is Kristen and Kim, are you two got girls like working on, like, can you meet up at a show here? Is that? I think that'd be amazing. It'd be so good. So good. Mary, oh, Mary, we took three weeks just going to shops around Lake Michigan, up through Michigan, um, and down through Wisconsin. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. If you hit yarn shops as well as festivals, like. It's a lot. It, you could be busy all year. Yes. Oh. <gasps> See, I think if you were to do like the year of accessory knitting, you could go to a fiber festival on the weekend. Yes. You could cast on a hat, a cowl, mittens. Okay. And you could knit it during the week as you're sightseeing, hitting up a yarn shop, going to knit night mm -hmm. and finish it in time for the next weekend's fiber festival. And yes. just keep going. You could, yes. I mean, if anything, guys, let's be honest, it would help Louise focus because she would only be able to work on what she had in her suitcase. That's right. If I was like living out of a backpack. <gasps> oh, she'd my God. have to that, focus. Like, that almost <laughs> gave me chest palpitations. Got it. <laughs> I think uh, you, you've never traveled with me. Uh, I think it's roughing it if the hotel doesn't have a swimming pool. Uh, I don't. I don't do backpack travel. I travel with a large suitcase. Yeah, okay. okay. I don't. I don't. I don't do that. It's not. Mm, no, I believe in swimming pools and room service. I yeah, I'm good with swimming pool. Uh, swimming pool. Yes, we would have to do that. Oh my goodness. Oh yes, yeah, Susanna. Su Susanna starting a um starting a sock class, a Zoom sock knitting class that she's got in May. That will be fun, Susanna. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And didn't you say that was going to be like a, a different type of heel or talk about different heels in that class? That'll be really fun. Tammy. Oh, Tammy saying, Joe, check out vendors in Frederick, Maryland, the Friday before the show. Different organizers than years previous. Oh, so don't have their name. All right. Well. That's this is really good to check out where your vendors are going to be placed yeah. so you have like a plan of attack. Okay, so Kim, Kim says Louise Toronto is five hours from you. So Kim, you're in the in the States, right? Um so it'd be a day to drive up, two days to do the festival, and then a day to drive home because you're gonna want that downtime and sleep. Yeah, because you're gonna well, be overstimulated be from the festival. That would be a weekend trip. But see, that's kind of like how. It was how long of a drive? I can't remember how long of a drive, but I think what I'm thinking eight hours to go to Rhinebeck, I think was an eight. It was like a day's drive. Yeah. A day's a good. 
when we're doing things with him visiting mom, it's because it's it's eight hours from Winnipeg to Saskatoon. Mm-hmm. So me and Aaron will do the smaller festivals because we can just stay at mom and dad's house. Like bigger is yeah. an hour outside of Saskatoon. So like we drive up and then we go do set up, do the festival, break it down, get back in the car, go home. And mom's made us dinner because she knows we've been up and out the door early and done a festival all day. Oh, well, that sounds fun. Yeah. But it's 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 planning it out. But yeah, once you get over once you get over like that three hour drive, then you start to think, okay, yeah. then you need to do a little bit more scheduling. Because yeah, the drive is plan. can be wearing and exhausting. Five hours and up, it's really best if you can do those as separate days. Yeah. It's not always feasible, but it's best if you can try to swing Thank it that you. way. Yes. In an ideal Oh, and that way you can stop for lunch and get out, stretch your legs. Like, that's right. And you yeah, don't have yeah. to if feel so time crunched. Up. Yeah, if you're not just driving straight through. Yeah, if you've got a little bit. Um, I mean, a great eating. way to eat through podcasts and audiobooks. Yes, yes, absolutely. Susanna, yes, that sock class sounds fun. Um, starts with a heel, then the yeah, next. You guys, I've been up all day. <laughs> afterthought heel what's that how about yawning because we're, we're you're boring it's i've been up all day i'm tired oh well oh my goodness louise would have fun knitting all of the hobby lobby stores oh my gosh yes but yes we def have definitely have to hit a hobby lobby because that was just so fun <laughs> oh Susanna says okay it's 14 to 15 hours calgary to winnipeg that's a hike. That is that's definitely right. a commitment. That, it, that's, it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Local yarn shop day is coming up. That's right. That is always kind of like the second weekend in June, I think, first, second weekend. Some shops kind Somewhere of Somewhere in there. Do, yeah. The weekend on either end. Um, and Wendy, so you're gonna be in Ottawa. Lots of shops there. Oh, Wendy, you sound like you have got a fun summer planned. Kristen. Oh, Kristen's getting a Hobby Lobby in town by October. Oh, my nice. God. Oh, that will be something to look forward to. Oh, yes. So Susanna says so when she goes from um, that was Calgary to Winnipeg, she takes two days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you have to. Yeah. That's yeah, you gotta split that up. Fourteen hours, yeah. That's a that's two days of driving. You need <laughs> you need to spend a night somewhere and relax, get something to eat, get a good night's sleep. Oh you guys look at this. I'm getting a leg on my sock. Good. Yep, this is gonna be a sock a sock weekend. I really just wanna sit and knit on the sock. I'm hey doing one of several projects that is at the just knit miles in the round stage yeah sometimes that's good just round and round relaxing knitting and when you get tired of one project you just switch it out for another pretty much yep easy peasy i've been doing some heavy duty crochet this week with my hands so they're so a now. bit tired so do you find now switching to knitting is a bit of a break? Well, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm knitting or I'm crocheting worsted yarn held double on a five millimeter hook. So it's I'm I'm making very tight fabric. Oh, and, that's, okay, and it that's has to be right. for what I'm making. But that tires my hands out pretty quick. Sure it was. So yeah. flipping to the knitting, which is nowhere near that tight of a couch, <laughs> is uh, a lot more relaxing and easier to do when I need a break. And knitting to crochet is a different movement, so... Yes. Yeah. And that's good. Your hands, your muscles need that, that change. Oh my gosh. Susanna said she used to at one point, um, she would drive that all in one day. No, thank you. Oh my gosh. That would be, yeah, I don't know if I could do that. Oh, oh, that's right. Wendy. Yes. Sorry. I was, yes. I was thinking, look, I was thinking that in public day in June, 
That's right. So she, Wendy's clarifying here for me. April 27th is local yarn, yarn shop day and knit in public is in June. You know what? That's right. Because I'm going to be up at the cottage again. And I think I was, it seems the last couple of years, the last weekend in April, I have been up north. And I remember being in the grocery store on local yarn shop day up at the cottage and they have, they have yarn in the grocery store there. So I remember, I think doing a post and posting on Instagram and I was kind of like, okay, I am for this weekend. I am in my local yarn shop, which happens to be in the grocery store. <laughs> so, okay. So Wendy, you're going to be in, you're going to be in Ottawa in like next weekend. That is next weekend, isn't it? April's coming to an end here. We have two weeks as of today till our check-in. Zipping away. I know, that's crazy, isn't it? But it happens, it's the same way every year. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know, time just, just, it, yeah, just seems to slip away. But you guys, I am like really thinking, I don't know, I'm excited for some yarn shopping trips that we've got coming up and I sound like that we don't have breaks during the year because if you think about it 52 weekends that's 104 days off right there plus what how many long weekends are in there a year that gives you an extra day or two so yeah. uh, like what 112 114 days a year off where you're not working yeah that's before vacations that's a good way of looking at it. I like that way of looking at it. I still don't know where most of April has gone, but I know it's gone somewhere. Yeah, I know. That's fine. Oh, Susanna's doing DK socks. Um, I, I had a pair of DK socks. I'm reminding started. myself that I'm going to love this tunic when it's tunic length. Yeah. That's why I'm redoing it. But oh my gosh, I want to be done this time. But <laughs> also, well, it's gonna look way better once it's tunic like. You will be happy, and it will be worth all the extra knitting time. Yes, and at least I don't have to do the sleeves after this. They're done. That's right. That's a that's a good feeling. Okay, yeah, Suzanne has got me thinking about where in the world I put my DK socks. They were blue. They were yarn that we ordered from Knit Picks. And they were a nice, like, bright royal blue. No idea where I put them. I must have put them in a project bag. And then stuck them in another bag. Something, like, out of sight. That's a really good question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do some looking. I'm really... I'll find, yeah, I need to find those. It's going to bug me now. Oh, so does anybody else do, do um, local yarn shop day in, in public? Do your yarn shops do anything? Any get together? Oh, I'm sure mine does. It'd be weird if they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I know Little Red Mitten always does. Has people gather outside in the they have a big shade tree, um, kind of right off the side of the parking lot. So people sometimes just put lawn chairs right out there. Sometimes people just, they, they have a covered porch, like a veranda. So people will pull a line of chairs around there. So, yeah, it's kind of a, it's fun to just have a kind of a special day and, and uh, get people all out. And what are you doing, Kitty? So yeah, it's fun. I've done yeah. a couple of knit in public day things, but that was years ago. Our guild always used to do something. Every single year we would go somewhere and we would knit in public. We, When we had a local yarn shop in the town that we would knit in, we sat outside the yarn shop and just um, chatted to people on the sidewalk and just had a great um time and then we've gotten together in parks we've gotten together at community centers and you know june the first weekend in june or second weekend whichever one it is now i can't remember um 
you never knew. Sometimes we were freezing. It would be so cold and windy or rainy. We'd have to like dress for it. Other times you'd have to have your sunscreen and, uh, and, and be really careful about not getting a sunburn. Cause it'd That's be so weather. <laughs> so yeah, you, you just, you just couldn't guarantee one way or the other, even, even in June, it was still a little tricky. Wendy's working on the salty air tea. I couldn't get gauge Ooh. and found a calculator on gauge and what size to choose. Okay. <laughs> so are you on track now, Wendy? What yarn are you knitting it out of? Oh, Susanna, she's, it's the Perlick DK in the Cinnamon Toast colorway. Cinnamon Toast. Isn't that just a fun name? Is. 50% Viking Norwegian wool and 50% Norwegian wool or uh, Merino wool. Norwegian Viking. Nice. And Merino. But now is there any any nylon in there, Suzanne? Again, it, it doesn't have to be if it's a tight twist. Yeah, as long as it's a tight twist and they recommend it for socks, then which I'm sure they must. Well, that'll be fun. Very nice. Oh, my goodness. Wendy, yarn. Oh, oh. So Wendy's knitting her, her salty air tea out of yarn indulgences, silk and linen. Yeah. Oh, that just sounds lovely. That's going to have some beautiful drape. Oh, that, yeah. That's going to look really nice. It's going to feel so nice. Perfect summer fiber. No nylon. Okay. Oh, it's ancient arts yarn. Nice. Oh, hey, Sam. Nope. Baroque vintage DK in the purple. And I'm still going to the ramp. Yep. <laughs> oh, my God. It was mostly because I thought I was done. But see, isn't that a good project to work on if you're finding it a little... Um, but what's the word? What's the word? A little bit like you're struggling to get it done. It just seems like a lot of round and round knitting. Isn't that the perfect thing to do on a knit night when you've got that other was, people that you can chat and kind of distract why yourself? Why I'm working on it right now. <laughs> I certainly don't pick it up otherwise. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. That's what kind of what we're here for, right? Moral support. You know, this is this is a time when if you've got a project in time out, when you, we're all sitting here together, you should just take a deep breath. You should go pick it up. And, you know, if you have to pull back stitches, you know, or rip the whole thing out and start again, that's what we're all here giving moral support. Absolutely. When, when you just don't want to deal with it on your own. Well, I've been watching Retro Claude's uh, YouTube channel, mm -hmm. and uh, she does sewing and knitting. Okay. And she's like me. She's disabled. Mm -hmm. Different. I different disability. So she was, the last two years, she's been working on reducing her stash. You know, it's been a personal goal for her. So yeah. I've been watching along with her progress, and I'm just like, oh, it's not a bad idea. Not because I feel like my stash is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. but because it would give me an excuse to buy more yarn if I actually eat through some of the yarn I yeah. have. Yeah. So I've been contemplating doing the same thing. But I've also been really mean on myself this year. I will have fewer whips when I'm done the end of the year. Okay. And if I haven't picked them up, they're being frogged. And I'm setting limits by category. Yeah. So I'm only allowed to have three blankets on the go at the end of the year. Oh. I'm only allowed to have three sweaters on the go at the end. You get the idea. Yep, yep, yep. So yes. you have to... I either have to get it done or it gets frogged. Because I am I am very severely limiting the number I'm allowed to have. So you're going to have so to that... really, really look at what you've got. And if you really yeah. want to keep it, then yeah, you've got yeah. to get it done. I got to get it done. And if I'm not picking it up, it's not getting done. And I have to learn to be more honest with myself about that. Yes. Well, that's also an interesting challenge for sure. 
yeah, we just did a state of the whip update recording that I'm editing uh, right now. Not like this instant, but you know what I mean, right? Like yeah. this week I've been working on it and I ripped two projects. I'm like at 16 projects, 16 whips. Yeah. I'm like, ideally I should be down around 12 at the end of the year or nine. Oh, I have things I want to work on and other stuff I want to do and I can't get there if I don't free up the needles. Um, yes, that I totally relate to that. Okay. This that and I've been encouraging okay. Diana not to have four year long whips. <laughs> yeah, I can Put see my that. money where my mouth is. I can see that. Well, that's a, that will be a fun challenge. That will really get you to look at your things, figure out what you want to finish and what you don't. Absolutely. Yeah, because it's like last year, year before last year, I was like, no more worsted wool. I don't wear worsted garments. Oh, yeah. Well, see, it's good to know, right? It's good to know what what you what you'll what you'll wear and what you want. Well, yeah, I get too warm. So it has to like if I'm buying sweater quantities, it, it needs to be fingering weight or DK weight. Yep. Those are ones I wear. And I find it's so interesting, like how things kind of trends change, because I remember when I, I first started knitting, there wasn't a big selection of like DK or sport weight no. yarn. And I'm thinking like there might have been sport weight, but not DK. Like, it, yeah, there just wasn't a lot of it. It was kind of your go to was a worsted. Yeah. I'm I'm glad that's changed because I like having the option of, of a DK weight sweater, just a little lighter than a worsted. Well, I keep looking at vintage patterns, right? Like, oh, can you imagine trying to hunt down a three-ply yarn? Like a, mm -hmm. a proper three-ply yarn? Yeah. Not a not a sock or a worst like not a not a worsted four-ply. Mm -hmm. Like, hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so you want to have options so you can get the effect that you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. I also want to do more knitting pieces and seaming. So, like, I need to get some of the roundy, roundy stuff off the needles. Yes, okay. I, I want an, an easier way to custom the pattern to fit me properly. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's a, That'll be a fun, mm -hmm. fun adventure doing that, too. I think so. I think you've got a lot on the go. I love that. Oh my God. When don't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. That's always good. Uh, oh my gosh, you guys. Well, look at this. We're almost, we're just a couple minutes away from nine o'clock. Hey, look at that. The time went real quick. It did. It did. It did. It did. All that talking about our potential worldwide <laughs> yarn shopping trip. <laughs> uh. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that a lot. Just Drop saying, knitting yeah. outside castles in Scotland needs to oh. be a thing. I think that would be a good location for a live podcast. I know, so do I. <laughs> All right, we'll get on that and see if we can just see how we swing that. Happen. Yeah, see if we can swing it. Well, I mean, as it stands right now. Uh, I know someone I'm pretty sure will let me crash at their place for a bit. Norway, England, Thailand. <laughs> you got, that's good. That's a good start. Those people that collects people. Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, good stuff. All right. Well, everybody. Turkey, I'm though, she'd look at me funny for wanting to go to knit, but that's okay. <laughs> Why not? Oh, Suzanne is using the DK Treasures Simple Ribbed Sock Pattern. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Hopefully, I've got enough vision going tomorrow, Suzanne, I can go check the mailbox. Because if I've got a notification, then i got to go to the post office. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Well, that sounds exciting. Getting a, a package in the mail is always fun. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Well, everybody, I guess we are, we should probably wrap up so everybody can yes. start their weekends. I know it's Friday night. 
I might just see if I can find a movie and just sit down and keep working and uh, see if I can, how much I can get done on this sock leg. That'll be, that'll be my goal for the rest of the night. See the how... monster's not here and I don't hear her. So I need to go figure out what mess uh -oh. she's made. <laughs> Daisy's curled up down here by my feet. Patiently we, waiting. We don't do a lot of feet sleeping. There's space behind my computer on my computer desk. So occasionally it sounds like I have a dragon behind my computer because she snores. Oh. <laughs> but Probably um, warm back there for her. It is, yes, and she likes it because you can yeah. look out the window and it's warm and the window gets cracked for fresh air. So this is just like the perfect cat napping space. There, well, that's, they always find the best spots. They do, yeah. Oh, I have a self-facing window on this side so she gets sun late into the day. Oh, that's even nicer. Yeah. Kristen has to work, so does that mean that is like a early to bed kind of night? So no, no staying up super late. <laughs> I know those days are like kind of like behind us, right? Those days of like getting three or four hours of sleep and going into work or something crazy. No, like, thank you. I cannot function on that anymore. No. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. This was a super fun Friday night. I enjoyed it. It was good times. It was good chat. And I got to get started on my, my sock leg, which makes me mm -hmm. very happy. Yes. All right. Well, you guys, keep an eye out for more yarn festivals and keep us updated when you uh, are buying some yarn. And oh, finding so new, new yarn dyers. Let us know. Oh, Kristen. Her, her, her first client is at 8 a.m. Yeah, so that's a, that's an early morning, isn't it? Oh, uh, well. <sighs> not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. The, Cheryl and I are not podcasting tomorrow, so I might just sleep in a little bit. Fancy. I am going knitting, though. Our knitting guild is getting together in the afternoon, so that is always a fun time. It's always such a fun group of ladies. And then I have got my granddaughter for the rest of the weekend. So that will be lots of fun. I have the patron e knit in tomorrow. Uh, and then I have Warhammer on Sunday. Oh, so you've got fun plans too. Yeah. See, that's good. That's what weekends are for, isn't it? And D&D &D tomorrow night, but I'm calling in, so I'm not leaving the apartment. <laughs> Which sounds like not a bad thing, right? You can just get cozy. You can... Yeah, it is it uh, it is amusing when I sit down at the table to put out to the DM but if I called in I could be in my pajamas <laughs> <laughs> makes totally. him laugh he's like totally. if y'all called in I could be in my pajamas alright well everybody we're gonna head out so have a great rest of your night have a great start to the weekend happy knitting two weeks and what are you supposed to be working on I have the Star Trek Find Your Fade shawl. What are you working on? Um, Do you even remember what your secret crafting is for this month? <laughs> you are not Louise. supposed to ask me that. I know. I always Louise. remember. But this month, I have absolutely no idea. I actually, no, I don't. I think, I think it, it might have been one of the summer tops. I need I need to go back and watch the last podcast and see. I'm like, it was either that or socks. I'm like, I don't know. I know. Which obviously, space. which obviously means I haven't worked on it yet. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna be that much of a problem to ask. I was hoping we could get through this without <laughs> like just I was going to go back and rewatch the video and I was like, okay, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. She gave me no prompts at the start and say, don't ask. I don't remember. <laughs> no instructions were given. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. That's okay. Two weeks. Got lots of time. I got the whole weekend. It's good. It's good. So we'll be back <laughs> two Fridays and yes, we'll, we'll see where we are on our projects. Yes. I do have to go back and refresh my memory, but that's okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> so good. 
All right, you guys, have a good you know, weekend. This is why you never know what our check-ins are going to be like, because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps it suspenseful. Uh, it's fine to a project. Will she remember what it is? Will she get anything in on it? Join us in two weeks to find out the answers to all those questions. <laughs> okay, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a fantastic Friday night. Have a good weekend.